Hello. Let's explore identity some more. What do you say? Are you ready? We're so multifaceted. It's deeply amazing. As long as we're stuck in mind, we can swim on the surface of things and seem flat and not multidimensional. But that's just a seeming. That's just uh, one aspect of being, and a rather minor one, actually. Mind isn't really all it's cracked up to be. We have other aspects of self that are far more capable and transcendent than mind. And that's saying quite a lot. I mean, come on, mind is pretty toot and fantastic, really. But we're just so beyond imagination that it boggles the mind. And so it's fun to explore sometimes. Um, but, you know, as we're rising in consciousness, we greet paradox again and again. We keep seeing it where we once would have seen dualism and polarity, as we rise in awareness, we're finding that we contain them both, and they're just like the front and back of the hand. They're opposite, but they're not. You know, um, you've got a left hand, you've got a right hand. They're opposite, but they're not. They're also quite one. And so we've got a, a better, a higher perspective on things that uh, doesn't cause us to polarize the way the uh, mind vision tends to do. And so we can go farther this way. Uh, but that's not to say we won't run into things that uh, bring up pain for us. We will. And uh, pain is very much a part of our growth. And so I hope more and more of us are learning well, not to run away so quickly, you know. Um, things can come up, crop up at an inconvenient time. You're at work or something, and, and you just don't have time uh, for a cry fest, or it's not the right place, and so on. But hopefully, we don't bury things so deep and avoid them, and uh, that we do... Take some time. Find some time to get out in nature. Take a walk. Go into heart with them and just be with them for a while. Whatever it is. You're not being masochistic to have a good look at things that bring you pain. Know why? It's our emotion that's wiser than our mind. It's our emotion that's more tightly connected and woven into our higher self. It's a better avenue for awakening and for finding out who and what we are and exploring our possibilities and abilities. Uh, but as we do so, we'll, we'll have much joy, very much joy. I, I think that really sings through my journals, and I think it's visible there, so I don't need to uh, sell that to you. I think it's apparent. But we also have cycles of pain, and uh, it comes and it goes. It's um, never overwhelming, although at times it seems that way but that's from the mind's perspective. Who and what we are is so vast, is so grand, uh, but we're not used to owning that. We're not used to claiming that. We're not used to uh, acting from there, being, thinking, seeing, feeling, acting as if, you know? Um, we've been taught other ways and other self-concepts. And so uh, as we're working our way through clearing out the basement of all those old beliefs and those those programmings and the programming tactics that were used on us. Uh, hopefully we're doing a good job too of not letting it in, not, not continuing to allow ourselves to be programmed as society works hard to do uh, so that we're at least uh, stepping back from some of the TV and media viewing 
if not all of it. You know, every step counts. Every step does. And uh, with a joint effort to be in heart, to just keep remembering, center in the chest, just, just do that. You know, when you're walking to the bathroom, to the car, down the hall, through the, the lines in the grocery store, through the aisles, whenever it crosses your mind, just center there and then just continue do, doing what you're doing, but, but have a piece of your attention in the heart. And it's like you can have a listening ear stationed there. As long as you maintain some of this awareness, then you're there and alert for the guidance that comes from there. And it really does. It really and truly does. We're never alone. Each one of us has a whole team that works with us on the various dimensions and you know of our multifaceted being. We have, uh, call them what you will, angels, guides, star brothers and friends, higher self, God source, uh, elementals, uh, angel devas, uh, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're never alone. This seeming aloneness, though, you know, this is one of the things that I think makes beings kind of look up to those of us who chose to incarnate here on Earth, because it's hard. Even though it's not a real aloneness, it might as well frickin' be, you know, because it just feels like that. It just hurts. When you look at going through basically a whole lifetime or the better part of it, if not all of it for most people, without direct contact and communion with higher self, with your guides, guardians, angels, you know, spiritual friends, whatever, um, that's tough. That's tough because we are native to higher densities and dimensions than this. This is some place where we've come, where we've volunteered to be. And uh, in a way, we're at work here. In a way, we're on duty. Um, love has brought us a love so intense that it's immeasurable. And so we put these skin suits on, these DNA skin suits, these jackets that we're wearing. And uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. And we're leading a dual life, all of us, anyway, because we have the day life and then we have the dream life. And uh, I, for one, choose to view dreams as exiting the body to allow it to rest and sleep and remake itself there and going off into other dimensions and densities. And so that's another aspect of my being, and I'm on different dimensions besides 3D. And so we all lead that dual life. And it's very interesting. There are literally people. And, you know, I, I'm guessing that there's probably quite a few because I've heard from several myself. And um, I don't get out and about all that much. And, you know, my web presence is, is pretty small. But there are people that are literally unsure a lot of times about which life is real because of the lucidity of their, their dream life and the reality there. And uh, that's legitimate. I think as we're rising in consciousness, we begin to see. I mean, as soon as you just take a look at the facts that science has laid down about what's the nature of an atom and uh, you know uh, once again I don't know about the body of a lion but the body of a human being all the solid matter in it fits in a thimble only half full and so nothing is what it appears to be it really is just a seeming and maybe it's kind of a it seems like a lucid dreaming and yet, uh, on another layer or level of reality, we're not awake at all, you know? Um, whether in our, our dream life at night or in our dream life during the day. So there's many, we, we need to get comfortable 
traveling the dimensions and the densities and looking at things from the various perspectives. This will help make peace in the world as well. Because what's a different person but a different eye, a different view, a different vision on the world? The eye that's an EYE, you know, it's just a different perspective. And we need to quit arguing and fighting and, and just getting so rowdy with one another. Um, I guess there's a, a time and space for that. Um, hopefully we're transcending more and more of it though as we realize that there's no such thing as another being anyway. That's just another aspect of the one self. And I am that. You know, these eyes through which I hoped to see God are the eyes through which God sees me. And I didn't invent that saying. I don't know how old it is, but I, I know that it's from the Sufi tradition, an ancient mystical tradition. Was Rumi a Sufi? Wouldn't surprise me. I don't know enough about it to say. I love Rumi and, and the deep love uh, and the inexpressibleness of, of his expression. It's just, it's magnificent. And I can see now why poetry was invented. The heart gets, gets into things that are so deep that you just can't string a, a linear sentence together and uh, encompass it. You can't even begin to. And so with poetry, we get more artistic and uh, we, we paint the pictures of what we're, what we're experiencing, what we're seeing, the depth of our being uh, that we plumb. And, uh, it's nice to have a mind. It's, it's nice to, to take it along on some of these journeys. But overall, I spend time in the heart. I don't really go for the mind very much. And that's, that's the biggest hurdle to overcome, perhaps. I think it's, it's gotten so easy now to realize we're not the body. We've got not only OBEs, out-of-body experiencers, you know, that tell their stories, or perhaps you've had them yourself, you know, feel free to put in comments and, and, and maybe make a video and talk and, and tell your story. And we've got the NDEs, the near-death experiencers, who have, uh, you know, there's, it, it's, it's just a whole new world that's open to us, um, a lot of which is, is sufficiently scientifically verifiable not all of it, but enough aspects of it to establish its veracity. I mean, it's not proof. You can't prove things like that. Not with the techno toys that we've got here today. Um, our technology